Hello, I'm Eric Reno, and this is a video for tipsquirrel.com, the free website for everything Photoshop. In this video, we'll be shading this banner to give it a 3D look. So let's jump into Photoshop and see how it's done. So here I am in Photoshop, and as luck would have it, a banner does ship with Photoshop. We can get it from the custom shape tools. So let's click on here, and then down to the custom shapes, and then up into our shapes here. Now you can see I've already got it selected. It's this one here, Banner 2. If you can't see it, then you may need to come over to the cog and choose All or Banners and Awards. I'm going to click there and then on the arrow again and draw it out. Now I could hold Shift to constrain the proportions here, but for me it's a bit chunky. So I'm going to use just use my own judgment here to make it the size I want. There we go, something like that. And I'm going to change the color to a nice gold color. Now there's several ways that we can do the shading here. We can use a gradient, we can use the dodge and burn tools, or we can use the method I'm going to use here, which is clipping masks. So I'm going to create a new layer, and then make sure my colors are black and white. And now with a black brush of a hardness of about 20%. I'm going to bring this right down to about there and then click and then shift and click and shift will make it a straight line for me. Then I can come over here and click and shift and click. Now I can clip this to the layer below pressing alt or option key if you're using a Mac and then coming between the two layers creates this black arrow with a square. I click down and sure enough it's clipped to that layer. I can reduce the opacity now. There we are. Let's create a new layer. Switch the black and whites over so white is now my foreground colour. Make the brush a little bit smaller and then click, shift click, click and shift click and then alter option and there we go. Let's reduce the opacity. There we go, one more, up it comes. And now with white again, just add a bit of highlight to the end here. And Alt and click. There we go, and reduce the opacity. Oops, maybe do the right layer. There we go, and do this layer. There we go, that's better. All right, let's do one more. Nice big brush this time, right in the middle. Click down, Alt or Option, click, and reduce the opacity. And there we are, we've got our 3D looking ribbon all ready for us. There's bits and bobs that I want to do to this. I want to give it a shadow, we'll do that last, but I also want to put some text onto the ribbon. Now this is all seems very easy until you realize that the ribbon isn't straight. It's got a little bit of a bow to it, so we need to follow that contour. And we can do that by clicking on the shape layer and then going over to paths and there's our path for our ribbon. Now if I come and get my text tool, I can click down on the path. At the moment I'm inside the path as denoted by this dotted circle. If I come down a little bit, we should have a wavy line that tells us we're going to type on the path. I'm going to find the middle and just click down. Now I can type out what I need. Tip squirrel. And you'll notice it follows the path. But it's still not quite right. It's uh, not positioned correctly and it's right at the bottom. So let's go and get the black arrow tool and then come over to our text and you'll see that I get these two black arrows. All I've got to do then is just click down and just scooch it along a little bit till I find the middle or about where I want it to be. There we go. And now to move it up come over to my character palette and I can use this scrubby slider here, click down and drag it up. And there we go, it lifts it up from the baseline and we get it just about right. I'm gonna close that down again. Let's go back to my layers and bring this text layer up and double click it and choose a different color. I'm gonna go for a yellow, but a slightly dark yellow, okay. And the reason why I chose a darker yellow was because I'm going to put this into color burn. So we keep some of the shading as well. 
All right, that's good. Now you'll notice that this is already part of the clipping group and we don't want it there. So let's Alt and then click. You'll notice there's a line through that black arrow this time and click and it takes it away. Click on layer four, shift and click on shape layer and then control or command E to put them all onto one layer. Good. Now let's add a shadow. Again, there's a couple of ways we can do this. We can do it as a layer style if we wish. But what I'm going to do here is I'm going to press Control or Command and then click on the thumbnail of this layer just to make a selection. Then on a new layer, Control or Command and Backspace to fill it with black. Control or Command D to deselect. Now I'm going to drag that underneath and I've got my shadow. Now I'm going to press Control or Command T to transform and then click on this little icon here for warping. Now we can make the shadow exactly as I like. So let's bring that down. Maybe bring this down as well. In fact, I want to bring that a bit further down than the rest. Let's bring this one out, curl it around a little bit. And you notice I get a lot more control over my shadow doing it this way. Now I could have created it with layer styles and then created a layer from this, but you know, I chose to do it this way. Let's click the tick and then go to filter and blur and Gaussian blur. And about 12 is going to be all right for this one. Click OK. And again, reduce the opacity of this layer. That's better. Now, finally, what I want to do is I want to give this bit more of a curve. So layer five is now selected. I'm going to shift and click on my text layer right click and choose convert to smart object then i can control or command t to transform and then up onto my warp widget and this time i'm going to use the drop down menu and choose arc it's far too much so let's bring that down and i think about 15 to 20 is going to suit my purposes just about right here there we are that's nice click the tick and now I've created this nice and big so as I could go smaller if I wished. So let's do that. Control T. And then I'm going to press Shift to constrain the proportions. Alt to transform from the center and bring that down. And click the tick. And there we are. I'm going to go on to the Move tool just so as I can bring that to where I want it to be. Now if I wanted to change the text here, of course it's inside a smart object. So I can double click that and there's my text. I can come in here. And I could pop my name in if I wished. And although it looks straightish now, it will follow the contour, I promise you. Close that down, save it, and there we go. Right, one last time in there. And of course, what I'd like you to do is subscribe to this YouTube channel. There we are, we're all done. I'm Eric Renault. Thank you very much for joining me here at tipsquirrel.com. I hope to see you again soon. Bye bye for now. So here's a bit of a bonus tip for those people that are happy to use smart objects and nested smart objects. We did make this tip scroll follow the curve of the bottom, but of course it's not in perspective of the rest of the ribbon. But we can do that by going into the smart object and then converting the text to a smart object as well. Now what we can do is we can go to edit and transform and perspective. Now I can take hold of these corners and turn that over. There we go. And now it's a bit more in perspective to the ribbon. Let's click the tick and then we can close that down and save. And there we go. It's now in perspective. And if we wanted to change the text for this one, we can double click it and then double click it. And there's our text. And indeed, once again, I can put subscribe if it fits. There we go, it does. Click the tick, close it, save it, and there we go. Close it, save it, and we're done. So that's nested smart objects to keep the text in perfect perspective. Bye bye for now.